Hey, Rachel, how are you today? Thanks so much for joining us. Yay, I'm happy to be here. Right Thanks on. For having me. We have a lot to talk about today. Um, so many things happening in the world, and I really appreciate how you are showing up and what you are bringing to the table. Um, we're going to talk about some stuff that people might be a little bit um, activated by or triggered by, and I wanted to talk to you because I really respect what you're doing and how you are bringing information to the forefront and how you are becoming actively involved in the community in Portland to bring awareness about vaccines and about choice and about our bodies and bringing information that you are actually researching and putting statistics up and bringing personal interviews of people who have personally experienced um, vaccine injury or having you know, issues with being in alignment with with spouses or kids and and how to move forward in that. So I'd love to just dive into that and talk about what you're doing right now and, and being the ambassador uh, for the Children's Health Defense. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, yeah. Wow. I mean, where do you begin on this topic? Because there's there's just it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot. Um, I think it's important to, for for people that don't know me or my views to know that I'm, I'm not anti-vaccine by any means. Um, I think, I think people should be able to do what they want to do with their bodies. And, um, if an individual researches and they see that the, if they feel that the reward of getting it is worth any risk and they choose to get it awesome, I applaud you. Um, where I started getting, I guess you could say more activated in the, in the subject and more involved is when um when the mandates started happening and even before then actually i was kind of just wanting to to let people know because i don't think in mainstream media that that all of the information is getting out about things like adverse events like vaccine injuries um alternative treatments those type of things so actually i think probably this all of this started for me when i actually started getting really involved was when the censorship started happening and the fact checkers started not allowing people to post certain things. Yeah. And all of my red flags were going up and I was like, this does not feel right. Um, because I do believe part of making that choice and whether or not a person gets a vaccination, it needs to have informed consent, which means you need to know all of the facts. And um, when, when a lot of the facts are being hidden and people, um, including hundreds of doctors and scientists, um, are not allowed to share their findings, then, then that's a, a big problem. And yeah. um, so I did start, it started small. I think I started just sharing some things on social media, um, sharing a couple of things to my email list. And, and because it is such a heated topic, um, the, you know, the response pretty immediately was drastic. I would get a ton of private messages. I mean, dozens and dozens of private messages <laughs> that were people saying, hey, thank you so much for, for speaking up. This is like what I have what I have wanted to say, but couldn't find the words. Um, I really appreciate you doing this research. And then I would also get a lot of public comments um, from people who, um, well, some people wanting to just have a discussion and uh, which I really appreciate. I don't mind having discussions on social media and just, like comparing facts. Um, but man, a lot of people, because it is such a heated topic, just go right to some, you know, to the nastiness. Um, in fact, somebody was just telling me yesterday, they're like, how do you do it? How do you deal with like so much negativity on social media? And um, it, it's been a, like a, a learning process, but also I, uh, my husband calls it posting and ghosting. <laughs> uh, he's like, you've got to post and go straight. You got to post and then do not read the comments. Totally agree. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And, <laughs> and I got lost yesterday. I posted something and it was like instantly just like people were arguing in my comments and I was like wanting to hop in because you want to, you want to be able to like correct somebody when they say something that is not factual and you want to be able to defend yourself. But man, it's, it takes, it's so draining to do that, that if I were to, to get lost in the comments, then I wouldn't have any available space for volunteering, for doing things that are actually making a difference. So, um, yeah, 
I don't, I, <laughs> I don't know if that answered any question yeah. that you asked, or even if you asked a question, but that's kind of how things got started. Yeah, no, that's why it's shooting the shit, right? We're, we're here shooting the shit. We're, we're talking about what comes up in the conversation. You know, there, <clears throat> there can always be structure and there, there's also a fluidity in a conversation, right? So we can have our basics and then we can talk about what comes for you because that's perfect to share in that moment. And I, I totally agree with you with the uh, posting and ghosting. Thanks, Quinn, for saying that because um, I, I get really lost in stuff too sometimes and I want to defend and then I just realize that I'm wasting my energy. I, I could, it's not wasting, it's, it's not really beneficial for me to put my energy there because then it doesn't allow me, like you said, to focus on what's really important to me. And really what's important is you sharing the information and putting it out there from a different perspective, from your perspective, because it's unique and it is an educated response and sharing. And that's really what we're looking for here, not just posting a bunch of stuff that doesn't have anything to back it up, which is what a lot, a lot of what's happening or the things that do have backing that are not supporting a vaccine are being censored. And like you said, mm. like when those red flags come up, it's like, no, no, I'm not okay with that, right? Like this is my body. Um, I choose to, what goes in my body. And the moment you start asking me to carry around a vaccine card to prove that I am this you know, community of people that have now been vaccinated. Therefore, I am, quote, better than other people. Yeah, yeah. I have a problem with that, too. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I think beyond actual COVID and what, you know, the, the unfortunate deaths that have happened around it and people getting sick, I think the, the biggest damage by far that has been done has been what has happened to our society. Um, we are so divided. We are yeah. so polarized. Um, it's, I mean, I've, I've lost, uh, close friends over this, um, you know, have really uncomfortable relationships now with some family members and me too. Um, it's so it, that, and I mean, God, I feel so bad for our children, um, and what they're going through because, uh, it's, I mean, even beyond like the fact that, you know, these, these kids are, and I, I, you know, I think the mask, mask wearing is a total other subject. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to <laughs> like com combine the conversations because people have different feelings on either side of that, mm -hmm. but you know, our, our kids are, you know, their lives have changed so, so much over the yeah. course of the last year and a half. And there's so much trauma, um, trauma. Yeah. There's so much trauma and, and now even, and there's so much pressure. I mean, when you're talking mm -hmm. about like, you know, these having to have this, you know, vaccine card in order to fit in or feel like it's like you're a part of this better class of, of citizens, yeah. you know, our kids just are, want to be normal. They want yeah. to fit in. They, I mean, do you remember being a teenager? Like you just, yeah. right? puberty was you hard enough, <laughs> right? Like you, you don't want to stick out. You don't want to be the outcast. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in cities such as mine, I live in Portland, Oregon, and it's, um, a very, very liberal place, mm -hmm. um, which I, I used to love and appreciate. <laughs> and I probably leaned more towards that. Um, I've always been, I mean, I've been a registered independent for you know, the last 15 at least, at least mm -hmm. years, but I've always leaned left. Anyhow, point being, um, we're, we're definitely the minority of thinkers um, in being non-vaccinated here. And, you know, with, when it comes to our children, um, I was telling my daughter the other day, cause she and I have different points of view on, on the vaccine. She's currently 14. So she has a few more months. She turns 15 in February before she can apparently go get this without my permission. Wow. Um, That's amazing. So I'm trying, it really is. I'm trying <sighs> to do everything that I can to, to educate her and, and the other kids, um, mm -hmm as much as possible so they can make an informed choice. But I was telling her the other day, cause you know, we've had some really tough conversations about this, that I am so sorry that she has to go through this, that like all of her friends, um, you know, are vaccinated. She had to miss mm -hmm. 20 days of school this month, 20, because my older son got COVID. And even though she never got it, living in the same household, she had three negative tests. She still could not go back to school because it's as solid. If you're unvaccinated, it's 20 days, you're out. And of course you go back to school and people are like, where have you been? And um, now that I'm getting more visible and vocal in this area on 
my um, my opinions around these mandates, mm-hmm. you know, her her friends now um, know my feelings, and I uh, I really do like it, it. Part of me just like feels bad because I think I'm making it harder for her and the other kids because I am so vocal, but I'm doing it for them, and I yeah. hope someday that they'll understand that. Yeah, you have to be true to yourself and be the authentic you as well. And <clears throat> remembering that energetically, I mean, we all signed up for this journey together and those kids signed up for that journey with you or this journey with you currently. And, you know, they might have some feelings about what you believe at the moment. And at the end of the day, if you're not true to yourself, then you're not doing anybody any service. Yes, it's such a such a good reminder. I had this session with this psychic medium a week and a half ago, maybe. And she, um, she was, she was reminding me, my ancestral grandmother was there along with my grandmother that recently passed away in, in Betty. April. And, Betty, yes. Oh, that's a whole other topic. I think I was, <laughs> I was with you when she was, when she was in the hospital. Um, but they, it was this reminder. She said, like, you, you chose to come here. This is part of your, your purpose. This is part of your path. You, you're, you're supposed to be the voice for people that can't speak. You're supposed to be the light that sheds and on, on information. It's not going to be an easy road. Yeah. And, but you have support, you have your, your spirit guides. You've got, yes, you've got friends, you've got, there, there are, there is help if you ask for it. So it's this beautiful reminder that, okay, like I've got this, I chose to be here. I could do this because it's definitely not easy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I feel that I definitely have had some challenging conversations with family and friends over the last year and a half. And just recently, I mean, when I, when I moved to Texas, like this was just in March of this year, um, I had no plans of ever moving to Texas. It was never a thought in my head. And then, and leaving California, like the best state in the union, as far as I was concerned, living in the Bay area. And when I moved here, it was like after a whole year of just the Bay Area telling me no, 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 like everything I wanted to implement, everything I wanted to bring into that healing uh, arena for people was getting a big fat no. And I was like, okay, but the, the, the thing that would be most beneficial for us right now would be to come together in community and heal and, you know, seek alternative ways of caring for ourselves. Like, hey, you know, maybe our government could mention like having a healthy diet and exercising instead of telling people to stay inside and be afraid of each other and separate even more. When we don't hug each other, we don't have human touch. We end up being like prisoners in a jail. And uh, I work in a jail every week and I see how how traumatic it is not to be touched, how traumatic it is for your brain, for your body to experience that complete, utter separation and being told that you are not good enough or that you don't fit into this group. So therefore, you can't be here and you can't join the party. And that when I see that every day out in the, re- the, the regular world, I would say, outside of those walls, uh, it's, it is devastating to me and at the same time fuels the fire in me to share even more and to really check myself when I feel like checking out and letting go of all of it because I don't want to deal with it. And I realize like, hey, I signed up for this, this crazy ride and some days it's going to feel wonderful and other days it's going to feel like shit. And that really is up to me and the perspective that I choose in the moment. So when, when you're sharing, and I know you're getting more involved with public, um, public self, you know, bringing awareness to the public, how does that feel getting your face out there? Because you, the way I met you was through Spark, through your company, through your coaching company, and which is not really just coaching, like you're a very spiritual, intuitive person, and you're tapping in and, and supporting people. And I really appreciate that you're going to be bringing or that you are bringing that into the community. How does that feel to bring that into a broader um, space? Uh, It feels like, like the, the years that I spent building spark and doing a lot of, um, because when, when when I was with spark, it was a a big conference. It was a big part of it. We, uh, there's a lot of public speaking, a lot of like getting used to being visible. I feel like all of, all of that was, was preparing me for this much bigger message. 
Uh, and I think that like, if we all look back on our lives, like things that maybe seemed insignificant, like I, I had a stint where I worked three years for the American Cancer Society and I managed over a hundred volunteers. Wow. And now like I'm, I'm kind of circling back and I'm working with volunteers again. And, um, but it, all of that, like it, these, they're just building blocks to, to get us ready for the next chapter and the next chapter, or it could be 20 years down the road. Um, but it, like there's just no accidents. So I, I feel like I look back and I think like, you know, part of me, you know, I've gone through some mourning around spark ending um, because it was, you know, middle of 2020 when the company was probably at its height, honestly, of, I mean, our, we have a, had a membership community and um, it had like double in size. The conference already had like 150 tickets sold as, wow. of like, as of like January, 2020. And the conference wasn't until September. And so we, we knew it was going to be the biggest one yet, but um, with everything happening in the world, it just felt like I, I knew it was my, my time to, to let it go. And I ended up giving it to uh, an employee of mine and um, which didn't end up going super well. <laughs> <But that's okay. laughs> Think things through people before you give away a company. Um, but it, it's, you know, I don't, I don't think spark will be gone forever. I think it is kind of on a hiatus because right mm -hmm. now there's more important work to do in the world. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think, I think the connections as well that I was able to make through, through that organization, um, people that I've met play important parts in my life right now. And I know they will for many years to come. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We'll, we'll plan some workshops in the future as things start to progress and we start to see more clearly, like what, I mean, we know our purpose, we know why we're here. And then just to see how that evolves and how we can create something to open that to the public again, and to invite into that healing circle um, yes. in person. And as we do it, you know, in the ethers. And as you do it, when you, as you become more <clears throat> publicly uh, in the, in the, in the spotlight, which I'm number one excited about for you and feel that it will give more access to people who, like you said, don't feel that they have a voice at the moment or don't realize they have a voice at the moment to be in in their power and to manage their own decisions in their life and to really be present with themselves. And this is something that keeps coming back to me um, as I have been experiencing this is, you know, it's not necessarily being afraid to get COVID because that's not something I'm afraid of. And it's not necessarily being against vaccines because I'm not, um, as you said, you know, whoever, feel, if this feels safe for you and that's what you feel is best for you, then I fully honor that and I support you. Also, please respect and support what I choose to do with my body and allow me to have my experience as well without judgment, criticism or force. Yeah. And and when I start to, yeah, when I start to get into that, it's just like, wow, okay, like this, again, does not resonate. And as I've been moving through all of this, what I, what I keep coming back to is why are people so afraid to die? Mm. Where, where is that coming from? And, and what are people missing in the beauty of the transition that we experience in death? Um, and as I've shared with you before, you know, death for me isn't death. It's simply a change in the form of our energy. We never die. Our energy simply changes form. So if we're able, if more people are able to really tap into that truth for their self or, or even consider that to be a truth for their self, then they might not be so afraid to be in community right now. Right. Vaccinated yes. or unvaccinated. Right. Amen. Um, it's yeah, beautiful. One one of your your last newsletters also you were posting something about I, statistics and these are some this is something that I've been seeing too is that you know there was some information that was coming out about like more vaccinated like the people who are unvaccinated are infecting people who are vaccinated. And I'm I'm wondering if there was any articles in particular that you came across that that disproved this or provided a different perspective. 
Uh, yeah, several, several articles actually. Um, there's, there's so much research out there. And I, that, and that if, if you, one, I guess one website I would recommend going to is, is the children's health defense. Mm -hmm. Um, it it has a, a ton of research, a ton of articles for people who want to see something that's not being touted on the media, um, but is still very much valid. And I think that there is, I think it's important to say that because I, a lot of people believe, and I think that the, the mass media and all the higher powers that be want people to believe that um, anybody that goes against the, the main narrative, they're getting their information from, from you know, Oh, quit getting your information from Facebook. I hear that multiple times. And I'm hardly ever <laughs> on Facebook. So I'm never, definitely got not getting my information from Facebook. And Facebook is so highly censored. So of mm -hmm. course I'm not getting my information from Facebook. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I they they want people to believe one that this is this is a a a right wing agenda that the majority of people who are against mandates are like far right Republicans. And that's 100% not true. Um, you know, they, I, I mean, I live in a, in a very liberal town, like I said before, and I've the majority, and I've probably met you know, a few hundred people just in like different meetings, school board meetings, things like that. And the majority of them <clears throat> are not Republicans. And I have nothing against Republicans. I have nothing against yeah. Democrats. Like, listen, people, it, this is not, and I think there are a lot more people who have, um, who want to say something and they want to step up and they want to to share their voice, but they're so afraid of being associated yeah. with those crazy right wingers. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, my own mother called me once and she was like, somebody told me that because you're anti-vaccine, which is incorrect it's not right true. there, <laughs> it's not true, um, that, that you're, you might be involved with QAnon. <laughs> 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 oh, there's so many problems with that sentence. Mm -hmm. um, this, this is this is the thing. Like they they want us to be against each other, and they want us to like. There has to be some sort of bucket or label that needs to go on us. Um, yeah. And people are so afraid of those labels, so they stay silent. Yeah. And I know more people, like by far, more people who've gotten this vaccine because because they they ha they had to for a job or because they just wanted things to go back to normal and this seemed like the quickest way. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and very few people who actually like really did it because they were, they wanted to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. And I know that, I know that there's people out there for that because there's so many people who are just like, just give it to me because it's easiest. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately the statistics are coming out that it I mean, the vaccine is waning. It's not, it's not working how they intended it. If you look at, yeah. Countries like Israel, who had it, they, they were the first to get over ninety percent vaccine, their population vaccinated, and they consequently had like three months later the highest number of COVID cases in the world. So you look at instances like that, and there's like and even in the United States, I believe it's um, I think it might be Delaware, but don't quote me on that, people. But um, that have really high vaccination rates and still have very high very high COVID rates. And I know, you know, the argument, and this is kind of where I kind of started getting lost in, in my comment section yesterday and had to back away, <laughs> was I, I posted something that this, our, this, the White House press secretary recently contracted COVID. I saw she got that. It for, got it from somebody living in her house. Her whole household is fully vaccinated. And I posted something that just said, okay, I don't understand. Please explain to me why we are mandating it when you can still transmit it. Yeah. Like, and the, the majority of people who were trying to argue with me what were saying, well, it reduces symptoms. It reduces symptoms. And I was like, okay, let's just, even like, even if that is 100% true, which I know a lot of people who are fully vaccinated and really sick, mm -hmm. um, that has nothing to do with why you should mandate it. Like, exactly. You, you can't oh this i jessica i want you to be less sick so i'm going to force you to take this shot but by the way like this shot also has the highest number of vaccine injuries 
in, in history, all the other vaccines combined don't touch this vaccine in, as far as injuries go. Yeah. Um, and historically, so when you're talking about the, the vaccine, um, the adverse event reporting system bears, like that's another argument. People are like, well, that's not accurate. That's not an accurate system. And it's, you're right, it's not an accurate system because historically only one to 13% of actual events are reported. So the number is actually much, much higher. So right now there's 850,000 reports of injury in, in the last year, just since December, 2020. And, and like, I, I can't wrap my head around why we, how on earth we can try to force somebody to, to do something that, could, could, could kill them, especially when it comes to our children. Yeah. And especially now that they are allowing, uh, the, the, uh, vaccine to be given to children ages five to (sighs) 11, which really is mind blowing to me. If you're looking at, and this is just, this is looking at statistics from like MMR vaccine, which has huge amount of, uh, vaccine injuries related to it as well Mm -hmm. and linked to autism and whether whether people want to argue about whether it's been proven or not i mean really truly i know i have a handful of friends who had very healthy children went in for mmr vaccine and were completely autistic after that so and and then the statistics now show that one in like 48 children is born or is it has autism or yeah. after they've been vaccinated so it's one in 48 people will be will experience autism and that to me is very a very scary statistic. And considering that in like 20 more years, one in four people will experience autism. And it's like, <sighs> okay, well, this can't just be from the vaccine. It's from environmental factors as well and feeding ourselves, you know, food that's not really healthy for us. And also not being able to get vegetables and fruits that are very healthy for us because of the environment that they're growing in. So our environment becomes more and more toxic. Our inside environment becomes more and more toxic because of separation and not being, you know, in community in an allowing way and not, you know, seeing every each person's right is their divine right to to choose what to do in their experience and we're not here to control that or mandate that they do anything or force anything and the more force we we create the more resistance we're going to experience so we are in this constant space of fight or flight we're in this constant space of resistance when when do people have time to rest is another question i'd like people to consider mm. like rest whenever you are ill what helps you get better rest eating well right like drinking water exercise when you are feeling well enough to do so right and even if you are at home stuck in bed stretch (laughs) you know you don't have to do a full yoga class but stretch get your body moving right and connect and talk with people share what you're feeling instead of feeling like you have to be suppressed and keep it all to yourself because you might be seen as weak or vulnerable these are all things that people are not considering in all of this as well on the energetic aspect of it, right? You can be political about it out there in the environment outside all you want. And at the end of the day, what's happening inside of you? Yeah. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. And there's, gosh, there's so many things I want to say to all, to so many points that you just made, but one, one of them is, um, I had, a, I had a, a girlfriend that called me yesterday and she was asking me about an upcoming uh, rally thing that we're doing. And mm-hmm. um, she's like, Rach, what do you, I want, I appreciate all that you're doing for, for the community, but what are you doing for you? And when is the Good last question. time you, you took, <laughs> took a break and you rested? And I was like, Ugh. I was just thinking like, how, how am I going to make sure I'm taking care of myself so I can mm-hmm. show up for these other people? And it's a reminder. I mean, And this is something I know, I know I I used to teach this, but it's so easy to slip into, to trying to put other things that are, you feel more are more important than your health. But yeah, um, yeah, I mean, we've got to take care of our actual physical bodies or energetic body or spiritual body. Mm -hmm. Uh, Otherwise we're going to get depleted, but that's, you know, this whole other topic of that, that's not being talked about, you know, mainstream is, you know, if, if you're healthy, you have a very, 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 very small chance of actually dying from COVID or even getting like really, really sick. Correct. And, you know, we should be talking, you know, we're almost two years now into to this pandemic 
And I have not heard once coming from the White House, hey, like make sure you're getting out, moving your body, reduce your sugar intake, drink more water, and you need to improve your immune system right now. And unfortunately, it comes down to the fact that that's, <laughs> that's not going to make them any money. Uh-huh. And uh, ultimately, it's these, you know, ph- pharmaceutical companies that are, are making billions of dollars off of this and have their hand in our government, they have their hand in our media, and um, they're not going to make money off people who are out there exercising and eating right. And they want people, <laughs> they want people to need them. Yeah. Um, and it makes me so sad that we've become so reliant. And, you know, when you were talking about the MMR vaccine, um, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, when they, like I said, that was really big when I was, like, that was just a lot of that was coming to light when I started having kids back in 2004. And I remember um, Jenny McCarthy was kind of the face of, of uh, that kind of, that initial campaign. And I did so much research and tried to figure out what was best for my kids. And I ended up spacing out their, their first year of vaccines over the course of five years. So Mm -hmm. it was not so much at once because it's insane. The amount of it's crazy put into these babies' bodies. That's crazy. And it's like seven, seven different vaccines, like right as they come out of the chute. Like nowadays, it's a lot. It's so much, and so many. Like one shot will have like three different types of vaccine in it. It's, I mean, it, it blows my mind. But I remember, like, all of a sudden, it, they, you know, these doctors start coming out saying, "Oh, that's a myth. It's been debunked." And a lot of people were like, "Oh, okay, okay, moving along." Then it's been, it's that's just a myth. It's been debunked, and now seeing, seeing like people who have gotten, for example, like myocarditis, there's a, a famous mountain biker who, um, developed, like got, got the vaccine was super excited to get the vaccine because he wanted to travel and has, has had some serious heart issues since then. And he went into the, the emergency room when he started first having like his heart rate, his resting heart rates normally at like 55 and it jumped up to 160 and would not go down. And he went in there and he's like, Hey, you know, I, I've got my second shot like a week ago. I think this I've researched it. Like, oh, there has been a lot of heart issues that can happen, especially in men after getting the second shot. And they were like, that's a myth. Nope. You're just having a panic attack. And they like gave him a referral to a psychiatrist. And he's like, I'm not having a panic attack. I know my body. Um, but like seeing things like that and mm-hmm. like realizing that that then that's happening happening now and seeing that happen a lot it makes you think like what else have they lied to us about what else has been yeah. saying oh that's just a myth and we we believe it or you know a lot of people believe it because we want to trust these people that supposedly know more than this but ultimately mm-hmm. i think have ulterior motives and it's yeah scary yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make me feel very comfortable. Although, I mean, I was in, in and out of hospitals from the time I was five uh, until, you know, a few years ago. And it was <clears throat> something that, that I've experienced. I mean, I, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease and colitis when I was 14. And as I look back on my life now, like all the, the experiences I had from five until, you know, about 31, I was going to Stanford Children's Hospital and working with specialists, and none, not one of them told me about having a healthy diet, about exercise. All they did was give me a bunch of pills that really didn't help me feel any better and basically told me, well, well if you take these pills, it might cut like, you know, two surgeries out of your lifetime. And I was like, I, that's unacceptable. So I'm just going to feel like shit the rest of my life and take all these medicines that have other side effects. But that doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand why you're telling me to do this. And then all of the antibiotics that I was on for many, many years, which totally kills your microbiome and all of the mm. healthy bacteria throughout your digestive system, which only leaves space for those genes to be triggered and to create that experience within your body of Crohn's or of, you know, a congestive heart failure or of asthma or of whatever other fibroids, like whatever other symptoms people are experiencing throughout their life because their body has not been taken care of in the most aware way. And I really feel that that holistic medicine and alternative ways really 
is starting to come back into the spotlight now because people are, are, are scared to get vaccines or to go to the doctor because all they do is give you a pill instead of Mm -hmm. look at the deeper root of the issue like what why are you experiencing asthma what could that have to do with your heart center area with that that energetic part of you why don't doctors know about that okay well we're going to pay them just to put the band-aid on and then and then it might be beneficial to go talk to someone who is a naturopath or into holistic healing or a shaman or someone that does something else to support you in your healing journey because there's four different bodies that we're dealing with. It's mental, spiritual, physical, and emotional. And if we're not addressing all of them, then we are not healing. Yes. Oh, mic drop. (laughs) (laughs) God. And and I'm glad, and and I agree with you that it, it is holistic healing really is kind of getting more visible not not nearly as fast enough as it needs to be not for me either <laughs> um, but i i think i really believe though that like so much so much our systems are breaking down thank our, god <laughs> they, yes thank god um they there's a lot that's crumbling and a lot is being deconstructed and it's really fucking hard mm-hmm. um but a lot of like a lot of things are going to come out on the other side of this we're we're, i think we're going to have a a much better understanding as a society how we need to work together how we need to function Uh, and i think things like holistic healing are going to be forefront in people's minds and we just have to and i think a lot of people are going to get unfortunately sicker i think a lot of people are going to get injured i think um i think we're going to have to go through you know this really shadowy time and um, I think there, is, like, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So, like, if you're listening to this and you feel like I felt lots of times completely overwhelmed with the state of the world and wondering how this is going to all end, how can we come back from this road that we've gone down, all this fracturing? Uh, I, I can't. I don't know how it's all going to happen, but I do have faith that that there is there is an, another side of this, and it's a much brighter, more beautiful place. Uh, and when we all chose to to be here at this time, I mean, before we started recording, we were talking about that. Like we we chose to reincarnate at this time. We chose to play a role in society at this time. And whatever you're feeling called to do, whatever your contribution is, um, do it because that, that you don't have to be visible with a microphone on a stage to be making a difference. Um, you, you can make a difference in your, your small community just by one speaking out that makes a difference. Um, if you have a a gift, like as you do, Jessica, you have a beautiful gift with your sound healing, like that makes a huge difference in just helping people, helping people move through this and without losing their minds, (laughs) losing their, their sanity. Um, so there's, there's lots that we all can do to participate and we're all supposed to be contributing in in one way or another. And there's going to be a lot more people over the course of the next few months and years that are waking up to what's actually Mm -hmm. happening that are going to need the support of people who have been seeing what's happening all along. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're here. That's absolutely why we're here to shed light, as you said earlier, and to bring awareness to each individual, you know, we, we experience duality here. We experience, you know, plus, minus, black, white, male, female, you know, a good, bad, whatever that is. And, and really all of that duality we experience here is to remind us that we are one. And in so many ways, it's going to keep the universe will keep continuing to provide us opportunities to see the one. It just might take a lot more experience of duality and separation until the whole collective is able to really embrace it. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. I see so, that there was, um, I have a, a friend who was asking for doctor. He's a naturopath and just saying like, what do you think is going to happen with like, all, with now kids five and up mm-hmm. getting this vaccine. And he said, you know, unfortunately it's going to take a lot of kids getting injured and a lot of kids experiencing side effects, which can happen right away, can also happen five, 10 years. Like there's zero long-term effects studies because it, it takes time. Yeah. Um, so it's, 
like we just unfortunately like we're gonna have to get through things like that in order for more people to wake up and see what's actually happening and you know it makes me sad that our kids have to be these sacrificial lambs um not i'd say are not if i have anything to do with it not not mine yeah. but you know i mean and we can maybe dive into this for just a quick second you know my sure um my oldest got, i told you earlier he recently contracted covid he's mm-hmm. part of he got it from when he's on the football team and um the health department called when he was home quarantining and it was on speakerphone and they said, Oh, it looks like you got your first vaccine a few weeks ago. And we didn't know. He didn't oh, tell wow. us. Um, and that was, that was really, really tough, really, really tough. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think I kind of, I think I forget where I was going with that a little bit, but you know, in talking with him and his decisions around like, you know, why he got it and he he's 17 and he feels like he made the best decision for him. And I'm trusting, trusting that that's his path that he's going down and, mm-hmm. you know, he's got to make it. Um, but like now he's, you know, he's, he has, he's had COVID, so he's got natural immunity, mm-hmm. which is this whole other topic. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Every other country recognizes natural immunity, except for the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he's had, you know, one shot and we're having these conversations. Like, do you feel like you need to have the second one? And he's like, I, I, I don't think that I need it because, mm-hmm. you know, in, in fact, in a lot of other countries, having COVID and then having one shot is like the gold standard of protection in some countries. <laughs> um, however, and, um, you know, he, he also, you know, wants to participate in society and school and, our mm-hmm. school board is voting on mandating it for, for our, the school children on the, you know, in two, a week and a half. Yeah. And I, I guarantee you, if it means him having to be pulled out of school or him getting the second vaccine, he's going to get the second vaccine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so, and, and just a, <clears throat> a reminder, right? Like trusting, as you said, trusting where he's at and, and the decisions he's making and knowing that that it's perfect for him and what he chooses, even though you're you're his mom and you want to protect him and, and take care of him. At the same time, what you can do to support him is to, number one, share information like you've been doing and to also let him know that you do support him and and that, you know, to remind him as you know energetically to if you are deciding to get it to accept that vaccine with love and light and to you know have some sort of visualization as it is entering the body to invite it in that way instead of out of a fearful place such good advice absolutely i mean and, and i think that that does make a, a huge difference like because if, if you're if you're coming I mean, at if you believe in the, the law of attraction and you mm-hmm. understand how energy works, um, if you're terrified something bad's going to happen when you get it, then you are way more likely to invite something like that to happen. Yes. yes. Um, so that's, that's great advice for anybody who, who might get it in the future. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's been, you know, families, I've seen a lot of families that have, have been torn apart by disagreements and by being on on different sides of the fence. And I, I, I will not let that happen to our family. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if, and my, you know, my mom and I have had my mom and I see very differently on this topic. And, mm-hmm. you know, initially we were kind of having some heated discussions because it's, I, I truly feel sometimes we're living in like two alternate dimensions at the we same are. time. And we people, are. <laughs> people just see, the, see the world very differently and cannot like, like actually cannot see mm-hmm. what other people are seeing I agree um but we my mom and I decided we were gonna like we're not gonna let this affect our relationship as it has so many other people and so if we do decide to have a conversation and talk about a specific topic then mm-hmm. we end the conversation with I love you mm-hmm. and know that like we can come back again tomorrow and restart and yeah. that has been so very helpful um, you know, when I was first kind of coming out, coming out of the COVID closet and talking about <laughs> it, knowing I was about to get a lot, get a lot more visible with my views, I, I sent mm-hmm. this 
email out to my closest circle of family and friends and just said, Hey, like, I'm going to be sharing a lot more. Um, I can't, like, I can't just sit here and, and bite my tongue. It's just not what I'm, I'm made for. I'm going to be releasing this blog tomorrow. Um, it, it might like upset you. Um, and here's a few options of how we can move forward as, as family and friends. And, you know, option one was, um, we can have discussions about these topics and, and like, I welcome any debate or whatever, yeah. um, to our op option two, like we can stay friends, stay family and not talk about any of this and just hang out and have barbecues and do whatever, yeah. and just not bring this topic up. And that's totally fine with me as well. Um, or if you need to have a break and mm -hmm. like, this is just too much for you. Like we can, you know, we don't, we don't have to talk every day. We can, yeah. we can take a break. And, um, it was interesting how people reacted to that. I, I mean, I think I had two friends when well, no, I had one friend who was the only one who verbally said, this is too much. Can't, mm -hmm. can't, I, I need a break. Um, a couple of friends who were like, let's just not talk about it. It's fine. Some people yeah. who wanted to talk about it, but it, I think like, I think we need to, to just realize that like these relationships that we have with people, it's, you know, everybody's going to have a, a different reaction to what their, how, how their beliefs are challenged. And we just need to love and respect them through it anyways. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I'd like to, I'd like to end on that note. I like that note, respecting each other's uh, decisions and boundaries and, and their choices. I'd like to ask you one more question before we go. I feel, I feel like you are in your purpose. You've been in your purpose your whole life and you've been, as what I know of you, you've, you've found your purpose in each moment. And right now I feel you're in this new purpose and I'd like for you to share what it, one word of what it feels like to be in your purpose. What one word describes where you're at right now? How do you feel? Oh man, that's a, That's a tough one. You know, I think, I think the first word that, that came to mind was just aligned. Mm -hmm. So very aligned with, with my beliefs and my actions right now. Um, which does, I, I do feel full of purpose because of that. And, and also mm -hmm. it's terrifying. Like, I, <laughs> and it, <laughs> I, I, I think people need to know that too. Like, you can be in your purpose and you can be, you know, you can, it, it doesn't, it doesn't mean it's always easy. I think yeah. people have this misconception, um, that walking in your purpose, it means everything flows and every day's happy. And, um, you know, <laughs> we know that is not true. <laughs> it is. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it can be hard too. And you can still be in your purpose. Um, your emotions can fluctuate and you can still be in your purpose. You can doubt yourself and still be in your purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think probably the biggest gift and I'll, and I'll end with this that has happened this year is, um, I'm, I've always been a recovering people pleaser and I've always really cared what people thought about me. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, I've been kind of forced to have to let that go because I couldn't move forward in my purpose yeah. and have, and be the likable Rachel that wants mm -hmm. everybody to just like her and love her. And, um, that has been this huge weight off my shoulders. Yeah. So, I feel you. I if you don't like you what there. I just said, it's okay. I love you anyway. <laughs> 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 or is I, there's a meme out there that says, you know, there's many reasons that you find hate for me. How come I can't just love you for no reason? Mm. Yeah, we all That's hate beautiful. for no reason, but what about loving for no reason? So thank you so much for being here and sharing your being, your essence, your energy. And thank you for being aligned in your purpose and for um, being you. I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Thank you so much for allowing me to have this platform with you. Absolutely. Anytime. Talk to you later. Bye.